Hello! Today, first time indoors, inside. <laughs> Usually I'm outside somewhere and actually so forth. This is the fourth one and I remember it so well because every single time I've been outside at a different location. Once by the water, uh, once in the forest, another time by the dam and now I'm at home. And talking about being at home, I want to give you um, a little insight of mindful being, of my journey, which obviously relate, makes me going to talk about the book um, as I have won an award. Oh my God. I mean, I'm not quite sure I'm really comprehending this idea of winning something in that uh, relationship, especially in regards to, uh, you know, have written a book. So um, if anybody's gonna come in here and have additional questions about it, please feel free to reach out. And um, yes, so let me first by introducing myself. My name is Raditya Lasri, for those who don't know me. I've been in my business of mindful being for about five, almost six years now. Before COVID, I've been, I went back to school, I got a bachelor's degree, and during that time, I wanted to, well, actually, I didn't realize what I wanted to do with it. I just knew that if I not working. And again, there's a whole bunch that led me to go back to school. I lost my job. And um, so I knew that if I was looking for a job, it probably would be best to have a degree so I can get a better chance to start that process because rewind a few years before that, almost seven years before that, it was really, really difficult for me to find a job, not very fun experience. And I didn't want to have a repetition of that experience. As I went back to school in my mid thirties, I obviously had way more comprehension of life, an idea of what I'm interested in, what not, instead of, you know, usual times when we go to college at like 18, right? 18, 20 years old, where we get an idea of what we want. And then later on in life, we realize like, maybe that's not it, right? There are a few, and I know a few, that actually have picked what they're really passionate about and thrive in it, and that's what they wanna do for their living from day one till now. And I'm sure that there's more people that have been switching back and forth or figuring things out as they go and realizing like, I did this for a reason, and yet that's not really what I wanna do. Long story short, I realized that humans, people have always been something that I am extremely passionate about. And um, so as the days have gone on and how I've been, you know, deepening my understanding of what I really want to do and why do I stay with the title of mindfulness teacher? Because there have been moments very, very recently where I wanted to change my title. Uh, and the title in the end is just a description of the things that you do. So a title is not something, at least not in my perspective, that we stay connected to for the rest of our lives. It might be, and I was just in a call earlier, someone said about relationships, sometimes they come in for a reason and sometimes they're only here for a season. And I think titles are just the same. Anything in life, really, not everything has to stay with us. Not everything has to remain with us. And I feel like that is really where my strengths come in is to be able to let go of something that's no longer working and inviting new things, and then also being okay by going back again to the things that I was doing and that come easily that I want to continue doing. So with that said, a day at Mindful Being really has many different facets. Uh, there are facets of hosting workshops in various locations, at schools, in organizations, sometimes through Mindful Being, sometimes through other organizations that I'm working with that I present their vision and usually it's about mindfulness or meditation. And I have realized that that is 
the most important thing to me is to be in places where people are at. So everything I do, everything that I'm passionate about, everything that mindful being is focusing on is people, us, humanity, to bring a certain awareness and understanding on how we're cooperating. And so I am realizing, and I've said this now a second time, but it really is something that comes again and again. It's something about consistent change and bringing back up that term of like reasons and seasons. Like there are seasons in our lives where we're more in the inviting and like learning and taking in, which may be more in spring than in the fall, uh, but it all depends, right? And then there are moments where we just stay with what we know and we just want to get that worked out. And sometimes there are times when we just want to lean back and just enjoy what's happening. And so mindful being really works that way. We, we, me, um, as I'm the sole <laughs> employee in this organization, and I don't really call it a business because it's a way of living. So how a day goes is by attending to things that I personally feel are essential in life. And they might not look exactly like that in your life. So for me, for example, I wake up in the morning without an alarm. I head over to my um, meditation cushion that is in the next room. My phone has been plugged in to be charged downstairs. So there is no connection to my phone until later in the morning. Later means like it can be 30 to, minutes to an hour later. And these experiences then lead me, like the meditation, for example, leads me to reminiscing on what was yesterday, the days before, thinking about what I will be doing today, and then finding a way to just let those things go and just trust that right now I'm here sitting and being effortlessly. And uh, I was actually watching, someone was sharing uh, reels the other day with Jerry Seinfeld talking about meditation and that meditation is the one thing that requires no effort. Me just sitting here, not saying anything, it's meditation. It actually doesn't require any effort. But in my head, there's a lot going on. So the effort is not in the action. It's actually in the letting go of those thoughts. Anyway, I talked about meditation some other time. So if you're interested, I think it was the second session that I had, the one before this one, uh, where I spoke about meditation more in detail. Anywho, I have my meditation. I usually journal and then I read a few pages or one, how much time I have depending on when I wake up because as I said there's no alarm as I wake up in the morning and with that obviously it determines what how much time I have in the morning and so one of the reasons I don't wake up with an alarm is because I don't want to have a noise interfering with my awareness I'd say right and I didn't realize this until just recently I noticed that with the sound, which sometimes happens because I'm not by myself, there are other people in my household that do use their alarms. And I'm noticing there's a different waking up. When I wake up without an alarm, it's my thoughts that help me wake up to what is happening today. When you have the weirdest dream about work, running late or something, trust me, if you open your eyes, you look at the alarm, it's going to be wake up time. So this is what I've learned over the years. And so that's my morning routine. I take care of my family, breakfast, getting ready for school. And usually I already set myself up to go on my walk. So if you're watching this and you've been following along my stories in the past, you know that I usually let you know that I'm going on my walk because I either have a conversation with you or I share with you something that I'm seeing, something I'm thinking about uh, on my walk. And so these are really ways for you to connect to nature if you don't have the chance. So I'm here as 
part of mindful being to help you connect to those parts if you don't have the opportunity. If I don't have that time to do that, which happened, for example, today, uh, I get ready, I do my things, I make sure I'm prepared. And if I have something planned for that day, be it a workshop or something else, it happened already yesterday. So that today I can really focus on what's happening right now in this moment. And it really varies. I do put a lot of focus and time to ensure to stay connected with people I care about. And oftentimes there is one particular friend, if you're watching this, you know, I'm talking about you, is that we have working sessions together. We talk on a weekly basis and we work side by side. Sometimes we have things that we are going through that we want to have another set of eyes because if you're working on your own, if you're working by yourself, which maybe you who are watching this is also in the same shoes, knows that it sometimes is nice to have somebody speaking back to you or have another opinion about something or broaden your horizon and, and ask you like, oh, what about this? And so that is really something that I admire and love about the friendships that I have, you know, built throughout those years uh, in and having mindful being. And so it happens that over the years, I always wanted to write a book, by the way. So it's been years ago. Maybe you've heard about it, uh, the story, because I'm sure I talked about it about six months ago when my book first came out. And the place of book writing, publishing, going out there talking about your book, having it, you know, advertised and all these beautiful things that take a lot of effort. You don't really understand until you do it. And it might sound and seem so easy and simple on the outside. Maybe it's not. Maybe it was just me thinking that. But once you're in it, you're like, oh my God, I cannot believe this is more complicated than I thought. And um, I am so grateful for this award. I mean, I obviously never doubted myself. And yet, you don't know if that what you're thinking and hoping and believing in yourself that has really reflected on the outside. So receiving this honor and this award, especially in the section of education, in the section of government and politics, which I was telling a friend, it's like, was that a mistake? Well, she said there are no mistakes like that. So I'm going to take it in. And so the purpose of what I shared with you just now about a day in my, at Mindful Being and the book and this award, for example, is just that what we do behind the scenes seem way more effort, way more input than how it will showcase on the other side. No one will ever know how much time and effort you have put in to your life, to your relationship, to your work, unless they are with you day in and day out. And I want to honor some of my dear friends from Lisa, Christina, uh, Diana, Eva, and, and I'm sure there's a few more, but these are like the more, most significant ones in connection to mindful being. They have been there because they are doing very similar things. They are in that field. They understand the difficulty of it. And thanks to them, I am learning to appreciate the work that I do, the how much it takes. And the moment you have external people respond to you in a certain way. So this past Monday, I joined a membership program that is focused on this era that I'm in, uh, that helps different businesses to connect to one another. And I cannot tell you how many people within these few days, the week is not over yet, we're only midweek, how many connections have been built just by showing up there, just by committing to this one organization. And I cannot wait to see where these connections will take me. And it's not about the focus on where you will be, what you will get from it. Because if that is the focus, you will not get what you want. You will maybe get it, 
but it will not be as satisfying and long lasting as we want to. So I'm just going to make a brief example, right? And I always love to use food and exercise as an example because it's the easiest one, the one that most people can relate to. And so you're not going to get that six pack that you've been trying to get for maybe since you were in your early 20s, right? And it's still possible, I heard, in my 40s to get it. It just takes effort. It takes work. It takes consistent showing up and practice and believing that it is possible and not think just because I don't have it in six months or a year to give up, but to fundamentally believe that what I am investing myself in is for the long term and that it's not about what I get, how I get it, when I get it, that, but just that the journey that I'm in is extremely relevant. So with that said, I really hope that you will what I'm share what I share with you around how I operate within mindful being is actually how I operate in life. So my work is only a representation and a support to you to help you move through a life that you actually can sustain. Something you can do for the rest of your life. And it includes being okay that it's not always going to look the same. There are some days I don't do my meditation because I either woke up too late or something else is calling my attention. And actually today it didn't start with a meditation. It started with me going to a computer because I wanted to check something out that I thought maybe it would work. And only later because I got an extra hour, because um, the conversation that I wanted to have earlier was postponed to an hour later, I was able to go sit for a few minutes and even write in my journal. And I don't think I read anything just yet. So I want to also let you know, just because I have these certain things that I do on, I call it regular basis, is not on the everyday, but it's constant. And it's constant enough that when I don't do it once, that it won't throw me off right away. And that's where the practice of mindfulness comes in. But the practice of being present in your life comes in is that we practice as much as we can to stay present and not be judgmental and sad and frustrated when we're not. But recognizing that that is part of the journey. Part of the journey continuing it and believing and knowing that by just showing up with presence and returning back with no judgment, sometimes push a little bit more, sometimes a little less, that we will succeed. So at the end of the day, we need to look at ourselves in the mirror and ask what are certain pathways that I would like to make some changes to. And so with all that I've said, that possibly isn't exactly a moment by moment by moment description because like I do some art in between and but I'm not spending hours on it. Sometimes it's just five minutes, 10, ten minutes. Most of the time I'm in conversation with people because my goal is to understand people better, to learn more about them so that when I meet with you, when we have conversation about your life, when we try to move through our challenging uh, days and times and try to be more resp responsible, that we have a better, that I have a better understanding of who and how we can operate. Because there is nothing in life that is, you know, um, streamlined and that everything is a flow. And so I just want you to have a wonderful day and no matter how your day is, make the best of it. And even if it means just to put your legs up, lean back and just take a few moments and breathe, that is already good enough. So if you have any more questions about my days and how I operate, how I have certain ways of being, 
and more questions about the book, please put it in the comments or message me directly. And uh, I'd love to explore this with you. So I offer many different things. I'm not gonna go into this. You can check out my website for this. All that I wanted to share with you today is that every day is different. And as long as we have certain things that we can truly follow through most of days and something that brings us joy, the more we can be present for one another. So enjoy your day. See you soon.